Well, here we are. It is Friday, June, January 6, 2023. Hard to believe. And uh, this is our weekly video. We're going to take a look, as we always do, at uh, auctions that took place this week, some uh, price results, things that are coming up, what's happening in the market, because we're still coming out of the holidays, and it's been a little bit quiet. The global pages are filled up, though, way back up again. Um, as as is, was predicted, uh, you know, December's pretty quiet, and uh, in the last week, uh, the global pages have, have really filled out uh, with, a, with a lot of material. This is just the... Uh, the U.S. page, and that's only a quarter of it. Um, it, goes on and on and on and on and on. And this is just auctions on live auctioneers in the United States. This doesn't include any links that we have over to Invaluable um, and so forth. And then you have th two more pages of stuff that's happening over in the EU. Um, uh, some some good things coming up, some good export wares and so forth. And before we get into it too much for the week, I wanted to talk about a couple of things. One, um, uh, the, the Cohen and Cohen sale um, uh, at Bonhams that's coming up. Cohen and Cohen, as many of you know, is a, a, a major uh, dealer in the UK for uh, Chinese export porcelain uh, run by uh, uh, M Michael Cohen and his wife Iwa and uh, some other folks that work there. And uh, this is the catalog at Bonhams. Some great things. We did a video on it. We went through it because there are a lot of things in there that are very reasonably priced, very reasonable estimates. Whether they go for that, I don't know. But it's one of those auctions. It's in New York. It's not in London. It's in New York. So if you live in the New York area, carpet bomb this auction with, with, with bids because there's a lot. There are quite a few lots, more than just a couple, quite a few lots estimated at under $2,000. Many of them are under 1000 um, which is rather shocking. I think some of them are going to go way over that, way outside of that. But you at least have a shot, get get active, get bidding on it and so forth. And um, Colin Sheaf and my friend Bill Sargent are going to be giving a speech about China trade porcelain at Bonhams. I think it's on the 22nd or the 23rd. It's in the catalog. They explained the, the deal. Um, if you go to the preview, you can attend the, the lecture for free. You don't need to um, uh, register or anything. Uh, I believe it's on the afternoon of the... Uh, let's just check it real quick. Hold on a second. Um, I'll just run right through it here. Uh, 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 the afternoon of Sunday, uh, January 22nd at 550 Madison Avenue, they're going to be giving a uh, talk. Bill uh, Colin Chief, who's the, uh, the big dog at Christie's as far as the uh, Chinese works of art, Asian works of art. He was at, I mean, he, he was at Christie's for many years. He, he ran that department. He's been with Bonhams now for over a decade, I guess. Uh, brilliant guy. I, and I've, I've dealt with him in the past. He's very, very nice. And uh, Billy Sargent, who also uh, author, uh, former curator of the PBD Essex Museum's China Trade Wing, uh, acolyte of Bill, uh, um, uh, I, mean, uh, I mean, Crosby Forbes, and um, they're both going to be speaking. And it, it, it'll be, it's going to be, if you're in there and you can go to that lecture, it'll be worth your time. I guarantee it. I guarantee it. They're both really good speakers. All right. Uh, but this is the catalog. It's on the it's on the uh, bookshelf already in the uh, catalog section of the site. Um, you know, through the red box. You know, off the home page, right there. And it'll take you over to it. And it's the first uh, catalog in the rack. Alrighty, so check that out. The other thing I want to talk about, this is something I had not seen before, and all of a sudden this week we saw three of them. As many of you know, we do this identification assistance service on the site here where for a very small fee, you can mail in, um, you can email us images and we'll send you back a video reply about what we, we what we uh, here it is, the ID identification assistant. And if you have an item that's in an auction, use the preview assistant and then you can just include links. But if you have something that you own, you can upload images through the identification side and we'll, we'll tell you what it is, how old it is, roughly what it's worth, and that kind of thing. And this week I had, I got one inquiry and then I got three, uh, two more. I got a total of three inquiries this week for these kinds of plates. Now, th this was just from one of them, but there were a number of different types. These armorial plates, these are fakes. And a lot of you are sitting there saying, boy, they look awful good. They do look awful good. They look awfully good. Until you break them down and look at the colors, you'll find that the, the, the blue is too dark. All right, this is the problem with them, okay? The cobalt blue decoration is too dark on these. Um, 
in here. The, uh, the decoration is off a bit. Some of the greens are the wrong shades of green and so forth. The cobalt is, of course, cobalt, so that is going to look fine no matter what they do. Uh, but the, the, the next thing you want to look at is the back of the plate, and this was the big giveaway, the foot rims. The foot rims are all wrong, and this, this, this shine on the back is all wrong. I saw one that was even was whiter, though, and had a better-looking foot rim. And, and, but this one is, uh, has this sort of grayish cast to it and this tan, overly tanned foot rim. This is, this is a foot rim that's been worked on to look like they were trying to, trying to make it look like a, a mid-18th century foot rim on export wear, and they, they didn't quite get it. But uh, the front of the plate is awfully good looking um, until you really examine it. And this is why I often say, look at a, look at a piece. If you have questions about it, look at the colors. S separate the colors in your mind and say, is that the right color? And in this case, uh, the, 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 the cobalt, I noticed, was too black. And some of the greens are off and some of the shading is off. The drawing isn't too bad, but it's a little too fussy. All right, and there's some other things wrong with it that I, I can't really get into too much, but but it has a number of elements that, that are wrong with it. Um, and also the, the, this type of the decoration on the rim wasn't something they typically use in 18th century export wares. But regardless, um, they are copying them, so beware. So now you're dealing with copies of, of course, the, all, the, all the famous uh, 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 Guangxu wares that are floating around, the butterfly vases and all that. The transitional wares that are everywhere now, the fakes of those, Sung wares, r fake Ru ware, Guan ware, Gi wares, <laughs> um, and of course the never ending slew of phony um, ar archaic bronzes, and then of course all the jades. So the, 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 the number of things that are being produced and copied and faked intentionally to deceive people is getting bigger and bigger and bigger all the time. Um, and I'm, I'm just uh, uh, bringing that out because th this is a, a new type that is particularly dangerous um, for people that haven't handled a lot of armorial wear, and it's going to cost people a lot of money, so be very, very careful. Okay, now, um, over here on the uh, uh, live auctioneer side, Hannums had their sale just this week on the third, and they did pretty well. They had a pretty good result. They had very, Hannums often has ridiculously low estimates, and they really just are, it's their way of telling people um, you know, there's no reserve on this. This had a 400 to 8, 600 pound estimate and ended up selling for $2,800 because the four to 600 pounds for a very fine European um, uh, pattern, uh, uh, you know, uh, 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 Peaching, peaking enamel on uh, copper of this quality uh, going for four to six hundred dollars would be crazy. This was a very nice one, very very good quality, um, very beautifully done all the way around. Uh, it has some of the cracks in the in the enamels, which are very typical because these are painted on copper, as you know, and copper uh, tends to crack enamels if it flexes at all. And uh, there's the back of it, and overall it was in, in very good condition and ended up selling for 2,800 pounds. Um, uh, and with buyer's premium, you're, you're gonna be up around $3,500. But a very fine example, it was good size. It was a foot long, 30 centimeters in length. So this wasn't a little saucer. This was a, a rather large, uh, substantial piece. Uh, and it brought a good price, but it was worth it. It was absolutely worth it. And then they had this, this. Uh, now they had this listed as Kangxi. This is not a Kangxi vase. Uh, obviously, if those of you that buy this, this is a, a green glaze on biscuit ware example made in the late 19th century. Um, Hannums isn't always that good at, uh, at uh, uh, dating things. It had a fair amount of damage to it, and uh, the bottom of it here is sort of gunked up a little bit. It's not a fake, though, um, but this is a 19th century jar, and it brought a 19th century uh, jar price. It was estimated at only 80 to 120, 120 pounds because of the damage to it. But it was very tall, 45 centimeters. So this was an 18 inch, 19 inch tall jar and uh, very attractive. Uh, somebody will get that top. The top has been broken and the neck has repairs to it. They'll get that cleaned up and uh, it'll sell somebody very well because the colors are really appealing. 
um, very very elegant looking jar. But it wasn't Kangxi period. It was it was it was later. And then this this 18th century Chunlung dish, estimated at two to three hundred uh, pounds, ended up selling for 595 pounds plus premium. But this was a nice plate, very nicely done, pretty enamel, soft soft colors, uh, well done uh, cobalt blue, a little bit of wear to some of the enamels in the center it looks like, and it may be the lighting. The lighting may have washed it out a little bit, but this was a nice platter. Um, and somebody paid uh, well around uh, $700, eight, $750 for it, including the buyer's premium. But it was a nice plate and it was good size. It was 36 centimeters in diameter. All right, and then over here to this is these uh, Femi Ver uh, uh, plates. Uh, Kangxi period, here's the back. One of them has the groove foot rim. Um, it's uh, obviously been uh, rather badly damaged. <laughs> uh, needs a friend, needs some glue. And uh, this one has been damaged and that one was perfect. So you had three that needed work and one that was okay. Um, and they ended up selling for $655, which is perfectly acceptable. Um, they had an estimate again, very modest estimate, 880. 80 to 120 pounds and of course many of you know you'd pay that for it um, th this kind of plate can be cleaned up um, and get it reattached and it would look pretty good that one can e even be more easily cleaned up than the, uh, the other one the single plate right there um, was probably worth a lot um, so basically you, you've got one you paid but the, what it ended up being was you paid 655 plus premium 655 dollars 550 pounds plus premium for one plate and you got two for free, um, this one and that one. Um, the the groove foot rim I think is a, it looks like a pretty nice one with these fo with these uh, uh, foliate edges around it. These lotus, you know, like petal 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 uh, impression edges um, around the piece. At any rate, that was a nice thing. And uh, then there was this, the, the 19th century, first half of the 19th century Canton Bowl. Uh, it was a little over, uh, about 13 inches in diameter. And somebody, I think, got a very good buy, um, um, 190 pounds. Um, I think this bowl was in pretty good shape, as I recall. I don't remember anything being particularly wrong with it. I don't think there was. that a tiny, tiny, tiny nick out of the rim. But this is a good rose mandarin. This is, this is a good-looking mandarin bowl. Um, there's the bottom of it. Looks absolutely fine. And somebody picked this bowl up for just $226 uh, dollars US plus premium. So around three and a, 300, three and a quarter by the time you're all done. Uh, no, not even. Two, two, uh, 270, 280, 280, roughly. All right. That was a good buy. That was a really good buy. Because on eBay, they could put that bowl up and probably get uh, double. All right. And then this, um, I talked about these teapots, I believe, on the, on the, on the global... Uh, uh, a, a member video a couple of weeks ago. I might have mentioned them over here. I don't really remember. Uh, but they had this these group of three Kangxi uh, teapots. They were matching, and they were estimated just $100 to $150. And uh, as we discussed in the video, I said, well, it's probably going to bring, they're worth around, you know, four to six hundred, four or five hundred dollars a piece uh, should be. And it's, and it's a set of three, which is really is, uh, rather astounding because you don't see sets of three very often in teapots. And uh, this one, one went for seventeen hundred and eighty-six dollars plus premium. So they ended up selling very well. They ended up going uh, probably for around twenty-three hundred dollars for the for the, or about eight, just a hair under eight hundred dollars a piece. But very unusual to find three of them. Very unusual. Really, really, really quite something. And uh, then I wanted to mention these. These are coming up at the Stair Gallery auction. If you like Chinese uh, 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 paintings and prints and so forth, um, you might want to take a look at this. Now, these aren't terribly old. These are made by Nagensha. Nagensha is a company in Japan um, that does absolutely phenomenal printing. Um, and and uh, they mislabeled all of them um, uh, for some reason. I don't know why. Uh, they're calling them Japanese prints. This is a Chinese. This is a this is a, a copy, a very a very good, very fine copy, of a uh, Song Dynasty painting that's fairly famous. And um, uh, this company did these in the 1980s, believe it or not. And they did them in these beautiful presentation albums. But keep in mind that the, the actual painting, the one that they copied when they did this very, this is a very fine, this is not just printing. This is high grade museum quality um, prints. Uh, that's what Nagensha is famous for. And um, 
This, this one is Springtime Promenade uh, by uh, Ma Yuan and the Song Dynasty. So it's, it's, it's not taken from a Japanese thing. I think they're just calling them Japanese prints, maybe because they were printed in Japan. But the Japanese prints of Chinese subjects. And this one has a couple of them in it. These are not cheap. These typically sell for pretty good money. These are uh, very popular because the quality of the printing is so good. And obviously, the, the originals to these are, are worth... 5 million, 3 million, 2 million, 10 million, you know, that kind of thing. So, you, you know, it's, it's, it, this is for, this is for the, the, the average person, the person that can't afford to spend, you know, um, five or six million dollars on three paintings. Um, um, the starting bid on these is typically around a thousand dollars. They may cut the bid if there's no bid gotten by the time the sale starts. So I would recommend if you like these kinds of things, they're great to decorate your house in. They look wonderful. They're done by a very well-regarded company. Um, um, I, I encourage I encourage people to buy these and get them framed up because I think they're wonderful looking and they were done with great care. All right. The other thing that's coming up at the stair sale is this. Uh, this I'm mentioning this because I know a number of you are interested in carpets and rugs. This is a really nice Eagle Kazak. They call it a caraba, which is sort of a generic term. Uh, but this is a, a very nice Eagle Kazak with a very crisp yellow. It looks like a good rug to me. Um, and it looks like it's in very, very good condition. Here's the back of it. Uh, late 19th, maybe early 20th century, something like that. But it is in fantastic condition. And, and I don't think this is a copy, but look, look they, they obviously cleaned it. It's been... Okay, I'm back. Just a quick call from somebody in the family. Now, um, on to this, the Caucasian rug. Uh, if you're a rug buyer, this is something you, you, you're going to be pretty familiar with. It is in fantastic condition. It's seven feet long, almost five feet wide, four foot eight in width. Uh, and in the estimate is, is absurdly low. It isn't going to sell for eight to twelve hundred dollars. I can't imagine it. Uh, it should sell for mm, five to eight thousand four to six thousand somewhere in that price range uh if it goes for anything under that it's a great buy a really great buy and there are other rugs in the sale too so if you're one of our, my our, our rug people out there uh, uh check this out powerful colors big carpet looks good and it came from uh the crawley collection um uh, according to stair gallery all right now um over to this just a reminder the Brunk sale is coming up in five days. If you haven't gotten it, condition reports and gotten on that yet, do it. It's going to be, this is going to be a really interesting auction. I loved all this stuff. I don't think it's going to bring the world, but it, but it's, it's very attractive material. And um, uh, do, do check it out. And uh, one of the things I wanted to mention that's in the sale um, at that Brunk sale, and a couple of people have asked me about it, is this jar. Um, they've got it listed as large Korean um, blue and white vase with landscape decoration. This is not a Korean jar. This is a Japanese jar. And it has the um, uh, uh, Fukigawa, Fukigawa mark on the bottom. Um, it, it is beautifully done. It is a uh, late Meiji period example from what I can see. Uh, there's the bottom of it. And there's the mark. Uh, it is a very attractive piece of porcelain, though. And uh, right now, the uh, it has one bid of three hundred dollars. It is fairly large; it's fourteen inches tall, um, and it came from somebody who who purchased. They bought it in in Seoul, um, but it's not. It's I, I think maybe that's why they think it's Korean, but it, it, it's I don't believe it's Korean. Um, it, it, it certainly appears to be Japanese. A lot of Japanese porcelain gets shipped over to Korea to be sold in stores. Uh, but anyway, it's a beautiful piece of porcelain. All right, now over to um, uh, the global newsletter page for the week. Uh, one of the things I wanted to mention was was this. I put this in the newsletter last week because it's not an auction item and it's not Chinese. This is Japanese, and um, I, I put it in because I own some. I own. So I don't own this one, but I own a number of uh, framed prints that are in this pattern. This this uh, 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 cart pattern. These are Japanese and they're very well known. Uh, there was uh, uh, Eritor Galleries years ago was selling these for um, um, 800 to a thousand dollars a piece. Um, some of them, some of them was 1500, and they had another series of them, um, the little more advanced ones that are, uh, were around six thousand dollars. But this is a fairly rare type of Japanese print, and uh, they look fantastic framed. If you like Japanese art, uh, 250 is a perfectly reasonable price. He has a make an offer uh, button on there, so you know offer him two and a quarter and see what he says, or 200. Um, if it's been up there for a while, he might take it. The dating on it is about right, 1870s Meiji period, but it's not Chinese. 
Japanese, and it's not on pith. The Japanese never worked with pith paper. This is this very fine uh, Japanese paper. It's, it's, it's not a tissue paper, but it's very, very fine, very smooth, and it takes ink very well, so it doesn't bleed. Um, and that's why you get these nice crisp uh, lines. Uh, but this is a really nice type of uh, nice type of print, um, and uh, and uh, it's it's a, it's a good size one. But it, it's they have it listed also as a painting. It certainly doesn't look like it looks like a print to me. And I bet if you uh, flip it over, you'll see print marks on it. But anyway, it's a, it's a it's a, it's a fairly rare bird, and it's it's moderately priced. Um, and then over here to this, this sold the other day. And I, I wanted to point out, because these turn up fairly often, and people often ask me, what, what's the deal with these coconuts? Um, this is a coconut cup. And these coconut cups were very, very popular in um, uh, China, and they, they exported a lot of them. They carved coconuts in uh, uh, southern China, and um, they, they lined these uh, uh, cups sometimes with tin. Sometimes they lined them with silver even. Um, but this is this is what they look like. They were little wine sets, very very finely painted. I mean, very finely carved most of the time. And coconut shells develop this very attractive patina over time. So you get these light and dark areas, these speckles, these like touches of like gold in them. And and, and not much has been written about them. It's sort of it's sort of one of these you know these crafts that just don't get any attention. And I don't know why. It's, so, it's sort of like a, a mother of pearl game counters. Um, there are people who are, love collecting them, and I'm gonna. There were a couple that sold this week from Mr. Neil over in the UK. Uh, he's a great source for them. He, we often include them in the uh, newsletter. But these small, but moderately priced, but very interesting antiques. And uh, this this is a a coconut wine cup, probably from the the, the middle to the first half of the 19th century. And uh, somebody picked it up for just uh, what was it, uh, 83 dollars? Not bad. That was a nice buy. That was a nice little cup. All right, and then over here to this, this was um, uh, ceramics and collectibles had this up, the Shangri-La guys, as we call them. Um, they had a, a, this sort of nice uh, a gr grouping of assorted bowls. Um, here they are, covered bowls, uh, you know, little rice bowls, this foliate rim bowl up on this edge and all this. They put it up as a lot, um, 18th and 19th century wares. And... Um, they ended up selling for just $213, a good buy. And, you know, if you're interested in building a collection or an assortment of, of, of Chinese porcelains, um, uh, you know, from the 18th and 19th century, this was a great thing. You got, you got, you got uh, 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 seven of them um, right off the bat. So that, what does that work out to? About $30 a piece. Very good deal. Very good deal. Always check them out. And then over to this. This, this was, this was a, a, a very nice moon flask. And for some reason, um, they, they, they dated it as 20th century. This wasn't a 20th century jar vase. This was, a, this was a, a, a 19th century one. Unfortunately, the colors were so dark on it, um, you had to go fishing through to see what it really looked like. There it is, with this Mandarin pattern. This, this piece was done probably, um, looks like it was probably decorated, judging by the faces and the way they're done, during the mid-19th century, not the 20th century. Um, they're much older than they look. And uh, he called them Paranakan wares because of the blue. Um, not so sure I agree with that. But the colors are certainly vibrant and, and bright enough. And here you have all this beautiful um, rose mander and um, a rose, uh, a female rose uh, enameling uh, with a dominant uh, green and punctuated by reds. But uh, very attractive. This, this I think, was a very good buy. It, this was not as. This looks like if 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 you've seen a lot of these vases, you think of them. This looks like it's maybe 10 or 12 inches tall. It wasn't. This was an 18 inch tall vase, um, and and um, uh, one of the lines was reattached as we, we mentioned the other day, uh, but it's a minor thing um, because he's still there and in good shape. So they just two little spots where they glued it on, but it was 18 inches in height as I recall. Um, 18.5 inches. Uh, the, so somebody somebody got a great buy. Uh, this, this this had they shown it. I think had the the seller in this case photographed it with more frontal light uh, to illuminate the colors so that it looked more like these colors, and it put something in the scene when you photograph these things where they were made in a wide range of sizes. 
Um, these these jars, I just saw a pair of these today that were only seven inches tall, and um, I, we've seen them, you know, in the mid to upper 20 inches tall. But 18 inches is substantial. And had they photographed this with a with a standard sized wine bottle next to it, or a deck of playing cards, or a Coca can of Coke, as much as I hate Cokes. Of, Coca-Cola cans and photographs, anything to illustrate how big this thing was. So somebody got an absolutely great buy. Um, take more time doing your photographs. Illuminate them from the front. Don't backlight them. If they're too dark, take them over. Don't try to edit it by adding light in Photoshop or something like that because it, it may look fine on your screen, but it won't look fine on everybody's. I guarantee it because all screens are different. Um, but the camera... Generally, if you take photos that don't need editing, uh, you'll be fine. The, the the pictures look good on any on any screen, pretty much. All right, but uh, this this I think was one of the little bargains of the week because it still should have sold for thirteen to fifteen hundred dollars. It should have sold for about double that, given its size and the quality of the enameling. All right, and then over here to this, there's, we had mentioned the game counters. Uh, this is William O'Neill. He's a seller on eBay, very nice guy. Um, he's actually published a couple of books. I talked about it a few weeks ago. He pub published two pamphlets, very nice pamphlets. He sent them to me on uh, uh, armorial um, uh, game counters uh, carved into mother of pearl. And he seems to have a real source for them, places easy to, he can find them. And he sells them on eBay. And, I, and these were done during the, probably during the first half of the 19th century, you know, 1820, 1830, I would guess, judging by the quality. And, and these are fabulous uh, little objects. There we go, 1760 to 1809. So first half of the 19th century, this was finished up. But beautiful quality. Really, really beautiful quality, and um, they're fun to collect. Um, some of them are just very plain. Some of them have sometimes they have nothing on them at all. But some of them are heavily engraved, all hand engraved, like this one. And they're engraved almost like like paper currency. I mean, the the, the, the way they do engraving plates, it's the quality is that good. All this cross hatching and all this work that went into it, it's very very nice. And uh, it sold for it it, it, it sold for just. Uh, Forty-seven dollars for one of these. If you know, if you, you, you want to collect something that's hand done and wonderful and interesting, in a, a whole new spectrum, get a hold of Mr. O Mr. Neil. Um, he has a website, and you can you can order his, his books from him. They're, they're well written. They're not terribly long. They're fairly short, uh, twenty or so pages, thirty pages each. But you can you can you can learn an awful lot. He's got a lot of information in there. Highly recommend it. All right, now, um, this was something that sold this week. I thought I'd bring it up uh, because it was a good catalog. I put the catalog on the, uh, on the uh, newsletter page because this is the Jerry Tang sale, and this was a, a sale that you may remember we covered it. Um, it belongs to a, this collection belonged to a, he's still there. He still has a huge collection um, in Boston. And um, I, I got to meet him a couple of years ago and uh, spent some, uh, a, a couple of days going through his collection and seeing this stuff. It was absolutely amazing. Um, and he sold a, 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 a small percentage of his things at uh, Sotheby's over the course of two sales, and they published this catalog. And uh, this is a really great, rare Kangxi vase they have on the color, done in Famille Rose, uh, which means it was done at the very, very end of the Kangxi period because they didn't, uh, they didn't uh, uh, have it until then. That, that's when it came in. The first Famille Rose was made around uh, 1718 or so in China, and then Kangxi, of course, died um, um, in 1722, so he died shortly thereafter. But anyway, this was a very, very good catalog, and if one of you got this catalog, good, because it's it's worth having. The pictures are great, and they're top quality items. And you know, build your library of books. It's, I, you can't emphasize it enough. All right, and now this is this is a strange situation. Um, this is an old vase. It looks pretty good, and. Um, it was on e e eBay and it got up to seven or eight hundred dollars. I don't know, or thirteen hundred dollars or something. And then at the end, uh, the seller uh, did a really sneaky trick, and I'm not going to be putting him in the newsletter again this week because of it. Uh, he he dumped all the bids and then he closed the lot out because it wasn't bringing enough money. Um, he obviously doesn't understand how auctions work. Uh, because he didn't allow the auction to go through. I think it was, I forget what the bids were up to, but what sellers will do, they get cold feet, which this guy clearly got. Um, he, what he did was he uh, zeroed out the bids and then let it, let it, let it end, he ended it with, with, without it selling. There, that way he avoids the commission because if you cancel an auction with active bids, um, you pay a commission based on that amount. Um, but if you zero out all the bids and get rid of them, 
and then cancel it, you don't pay a commission. And that's what he did here. And he's now relisted this vase. And if you want it, you can go find it. Uh, but I'm not going to include it in the newsletter this week because um, I, I, I think people that do that are, are, are amateurs, to be very frank. Um, and he, does, he doesn't know what he's doing. But anyway, this was a, a pretty good vase. I'm not sure it was period. I think it was most likely a Republic period example, but a nice looking one nonetheless and unusually large. Um, it was uh, 28 inches tall. Um, but that's why I think it was also Republic because of the size. The size was very untypical. But um, so be, be, if you've ever seen one of these where you have something on your watch list and uh, it, it's up to, you know, it's got a bunch of bids and it's up to $1,000 or $1,200 and you check back once the sale is over and it's back to zero um, and it's been relisted, that is what the seller did. The seller got rid of all the bids, removed all the bids, and then ended the auction early because he got cold feet. Um, and usually they, they have to do it 12 hours or more before the close of the sale. So he did this probably in the, you know, the, you know, 24 hours before the sale ended. So he could, he could do that. And I, I think it's a, a very dumb idea because if you've been selling for any length of time on eBay, you know what happens in the last six hours, 12 hours. And you go to bed on, you know, the auction, your auction closes on Monday, Monday night, let's say, and you go to bed on Sunday and it's only up to 50 bucks and you got you a little worried and you wake up in the morning on Monday, 10 or 12 hours away from the close and suddenly it's up to $955 and you say, what happened? But what happened was is that everybody else is doing exactly what you probably do. You wait until the end. And uh, for some reason, sellers uh, that aren't used to selling, people who like to buy, um, don't don't understand that they don't they don't understand why other people think the same way they do, and uh, people are going to wait until the end of an auction. We had a we had a piece once that was at seven hundred dollars, um, uh, uh, ten minutes before the close. It closed and then at the end it went for thirty five thousand. All right, that's what can happen in the last few minutes of a sale, and certainly it happens in the last day of a sale. We've had many of those as well. So anyway, that's um, that's that's the case with that. If you see it out there, if you want to chase it, good luck but um, I don't recommend it. All right, now, because people that would do that, he'll do anything. Um, you don't know what people will do. All right, and now over to this this sale. These are some things that will be in this week's newsletter. One of them is this really nice uh, China Trade painting. On, on These are gouaches on, uh, on uh, I think these are pith paintings, right? On pith of a, it uh, looks like a, let me see here. What is that? What are they selling here? It is a silk merchant, maybe, or a, yeah, silk merchant. There's a bolt of silk he's got opened up there. So this is a silk dealer um, in China selling selling bolts of silk for uh, for people. And uh, over here you have these uh, barrels and, and bolts of silk lined up here. That's what it looks like to me. Um, any rate, it closes in three days. It's interesting. It's got a little repair to it, but it's it's up to only $16. Uh, it's, a, it's a nice thing. It's being sold by a seller out in Ohio. And if you can pick that up for 100 or $150, it's a pretty good thing. It's interesting. And especially if you're a silk robe buyer or a rank badge buyer, you, this is the kind of thing you want to have. All right. And this this is uh, closing in a couple of days on Monday also. This uh, slip decorated uh, blue um, uh, plate with the uh, shaped rim. Um, here's a picture of the, of, the, of the back of it. It's got a Chin Lung mark on it, but it's not Chin Lung. It's a late, it looks to me to be a, uh, a late Ching example. Um, that's not, that's an out of period marker. It could be early 19th century. could be, it's 19th century, but I don't know whether, it's hard to tell whether it's early or old, early or later, um, based on the way the foot rim is, because the foot rim's filthy. But um, certainly worth uh, looking into. How big is this face? How big is this plate? Uh, three days. <sighs> they put, they always put their dimensions at the bottom. 11 inches in diameter. Okay, 11 and 12, 11 and three quarter inches. It's just a hair under being a charger. Um, should sell for f f uh, 450 to $600, something like that in the end. Could go for more, but I, I don't think it will. I don't think it will. And uh, what is this? Oh, the book, Som Jenin's book on Ming pottery and porcelain. Um, uh, if, you're, if you're interested in this subject and you don't have Som Jenin's book on it, buy it. It's worth, it's a book you should read. Um, he was the, uh, the keeper of the, one of the collections that I think was the British Museum, um, highly regarded guy back in the day. He wrote a lot of books. He wrote a two volume set, thick two volume set on Japanese porcelain and pottery. Or was he at the Ashmolean? I forget where he was. I, it's my bad. Um, 
but this is a nice a nice book and it's one of the classics it's worth reading uh, a lot of information in it um, it's only up to a dollar all right uh, you want to chase this down it closes tomorrow saturday it's got a, a $20 20 pound shipping $23 to the US the book is worth about 75 to 100 dollars um, so uh, uh, it certainly covers so if you pay 20 10 or 20 for the book and you pick up the shipping for, for another 23 you're you've bought still bought it at 50% off and this looks like a first uh, like an, an old edition with its dust jacket i don't know if it's the first edition or not i can't tell um, doesn't look like the first edition for some reason to me maybe it is uh, condition good 240 pages uh, 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 uh. it doesn't say so assume it's a reprint they did do reprints of these uh, I own the reprints but it's a it's a, a book worth owning it's very informative very very informative and uh, this thing um, we're gonna put this in um, it's in there right now we're gonna relist it along it, it hasn't closed yet we put it in last Friday but I, uh, I want to point out, um, and I think everybody knows this, but if you don't, this is a Japanese dish. Okay, this is a Japanese low form dish uh, with this kashkuli pattern on it, uh, octopus legs, they call them, and there's the back of it. It's upside down, it's a chanwa mark. The Japanese use chanwa marks routinely on blue and white Arita wares. Uh, here, here's that dog tooth border you see on Japanese porcelain all the time and so forth it's a nice little piece of Japanese uh, ware for you know a little food serving dish uh, how big is it probably nine inches long or something <coughs> um, 23 centimeters long so yeah about about uh, about nine yeah nine or ten inches long okay yeah that's right um, but it's a nice piece of Arita ware should bring around a hundred dollars hundred and a quarter but if you can get it for less than that, that's fine too. It's it's from a seller over in um, uh, Dorset. All right, and then the last thing is this uh, watch keep and uh, uh, ink stand, uh, but it's done in these uh, sort of Quan John wear uh, palette. Uh, I like this. It's it's architectural slab constructed table thing. If you got a great pocket watch to put in there, put it in there. Chinese 18. I don't know when was this made. Uh, 1880s probably 1890s it's old uh, nice looking though uh, these are interesting there's the top of it there it is with all the wells you put the watch you put your watch down and hang it in front of the hole put it on your desk it's up to six hundred and twenty dollars it's gonna go for probably twelve to fourteen hundred these are pretty collectible uh, because not many of them survive because of the structure the way it's shaped they often are damaged and it's got calligraphy all over it which also drives the price okay so that's something worth considering all right, so uh, take that up in, in mind. You know, leave, just leave a bit of, you know, twelve, thirteen hundred dollars if you want it. Um, but uh, it, it'll get there. It'll get there. All right, so have a great week. Thanks for watching. Um, check out the new video uh, that we put up uh, with this one about the auction uh, at Cohen for uh, Bonhams for the Cohen and Cohen uh, export wares. It's beautiful stuff. It's absolutely beautiful, and uh, the quality uh, and the condition is just breathtaking. Um, it's, it's uh, very impressive <laughs> and uh, have a great weekend and we'll see you next week we're working on some other videos as we always are and uh, thanks for tuning in subscribe if you haven't already all right bye bye